In the United States, the Super Bowl is the premier advertising event of the year. Super Bowl commercials have become a cultural phenomenon among Americans, with many viewers only watching the game to see the commercials. This buzz surrounding Super Bowl ads creates somewhat of a temporary dystopia in which, for a few hours each year, Americans look forward to watching commercials. This is naturally a big pull for advertisers. It's almost a guarantee that their ads will be actively paid attention to. Additionally, the Super Bowl is frequently among the most watched television broadcasts in the United States each year. In fact, according to Nielsen ratings, out of the 20 most viewed American TV broadcasts of all time, only one of them isn't the Super Bowl. It was the series finale of MASH in 1983, which polled 105.9 million viewers. In comparison, Super Bowl 51 polled 111.3 million viewers in 2017. Super Bowl 50 polled 101.9 million viewers, and the record-setting Super Bowl 49 polled 115.2 million viewers, making it the most-watched television broadcast of all time. This all being said, it's no wonder that commercial airtime during the Super Bowl is so expensive, costing advertisers up to $5 million for 30 seconds of airtime in 2017. This amounts to advertisers only paying about 4 to 5 cents per each Super Bowl viewer. If history is any indication, this price is sure to go up in 2018. According to the American Media Association, Super Bowl commercial airtime has increased every year, starting at just $47,000 in 1967, with advertisers only paying mere fractions of cents per each viewer. Even upon adjusting for inflation, the cost of Super Bowl airtime in today's dollars, as shown by the black line on this graph provided by the AMA, has grown tremendously over time. Based on popular reception, it's obvious that spending all of this money on a Super Bowl advertisement is worth it to businesses. But what is it that makes these ads so captivating to American audiences? A 2004 content analysis by Kelly and Turley looked at advertisements during Super Bowl ads from 1996 to 2002. Their analysis included commercials from countless popular American brands, all the brands one would expect to be able to afford Super Bowl airtime. Kelly and Turley noted a key factor in advertisement affect and recall found in the results of a 2001 study by Newell, Henderson, and Wu. The study found that enhanced arousal did have a positive and significant effect on ad recall. The unique, party-like, high arousal context provided by the Super Bowl has an interesting effect on the advertisements shown during the game. Advertisers feel pressure to design their commercials with a similar level of hype to be more consistent with the game. A 1994 study by Gardner had similar findings. Informational advertisements are more effective in a negative mood-inducing context, and emotional advertisements in a positive mood-inducing context. Since watching the Super Bowl is a festive occasion for many viewers that generates positive moods, emotional appeals would be more likely to generate positive affect in those watching the advertisements. Kelly and Turley's content analysis found that higher levels of affect are associated with commercials which advertise goods rather than services, use emotional appeals, avoid straight announcements with a message format, include animals, and do not make quality claims. A perfect example of a Super Bowl advertisement that ticks at least three of those boxes is a 2015 Super Bowl ad which is known by most people as the Budweiser puppy ad. Well, you only need the light when it's burning low Only miss the sun when it starts to snow Only know you love her when you let her go Only know you've been high when you're feeling low Only hate the road when you're missing home Only know you love her when you let her go And you let her go This Budweiser ad, officially titled Puppy Love, was aired during the coveted 1A ad slot. That's Madison Avenue lingo for the first commercial of the first commercial break after kickoff. Puppy Love's position and airtime could be a huge contributing factor to how successful and memorable it was. 
A 2006 study by Lee tested long-term memory of Super Bowl commercials a week after it aired, specifically investigating primacy and recency effects. First, commercials were looked at on the micro level. Lee refers to commercial pods, meaning the individual clusters of advertisements played during a single commercial break. Nickelodeon Guts will return in a moment. And now back to Nickelodeon Guts. The study found that commercials in earlier positions within a pod generate stronger brand recall than those in later positions, indicating a strong primacy effect. In fact, it was even found that bumping a commercial three positions forwards, in other words, pushing it towards the beginning of the pod, had almost equal effects on brand recall than running multiple commercials for the same brand within a single pod, showing that primacy is even more powerful than multiple exposures in terms of brand recall. On the macro level, it was found that commercials aired in pods earlier during the Super Bowl generated stronger brand recall than commercials in pods aired later in the Super Bowl. Do you recognize any of these commercials that have been playing in the background? How about the brand that they're advertising? Each of those commercials at one point occupied that 1A position in the first pod of a Super Bowl broadcast. Let's go ahead and refresh your memory a bit. Lies. Oh. I'm your lucky team, Flag. We've gone through 14 seasons together, but in Flag years, I'm like 130. Now, I'm just holding on by a thread. So get all state, where agents keep you protected from mayhem like me. And the excitement here is tremendous. Look at that. I didn't know P. Diddy drove a Diet Pepsi truck. All right, this is how I roll. Check out my new ride. Another study done in 2013 by Ake, Sun, and Chen looked at the reception of Super Bowl ads by college students, a market which advertisers thrive off of. College students seem to gravitate towards commercials for soft drinks, snacks, pizza, fast food, and alcoholic beverages when determining their favorite Super Bowl commercial, with the top three being Doritos, M&Ms, and Budweiser. These results, however, do differ slightly by gender, as shown on these graphs. For male college students, the favorites in order were Doritos, then Budweiser, then M&Ms, while for female college students, M&Ms were the favorites, followed by, again, Doritos, then Budweiser. Additionally, college-age men's expectations are higher than women when watching Super Bowl ads, and they have a higher intention to buy advertised products than female students. A 2016 study by Carroll investigated modern Super Bowl ads by exploring how brand recall differs for traditional slogans and hashtag slogans for millennial. Seriously, millennial. Samples comprised of millennial. Just one. Okay, it was 170, but that needed to be pointed out. Anyways, this study found that brand recall is much higher for traditional slogans than for hashtag slogans with millennials. In other words, when given a slogan, we're more likely to remember the associated brand when given a traditional slogan. It'd be really cool to see the study replicated in 20 years.